Let me think. Uh, other features, the payment URL that you showed me this morning, Sebastian, and you put in yesterday's video. That's an interesting feature that users can use. For example, let's say Sebastian, uh, I owe him five ADA. He can send me a payment URL that says send five ADA to this wallet. I copy and paste it into your ROI. Boom. It, it generates the transaction for five ADA. I simply sign it and the correct amount goes to the correct wallet. Is that pretty much correct, Sebastian? That's how we uh, yeah. practice this morning? Yeah. So the reason we decided to develop this feature is because if you look at reasons why people don't send their crypto, obviously there's the, the reason that people keep it as an investment and so they don't want to send it. There's also the fact that people feel really insecure about sending their crypto, right? They're not sure if they got the address wrong and they, they kind of have a mini panic attack every time they have to send a crypto to a, an address, especially if it's a large amount. And so we gave a lot of thought about how do we help solve this problem and make people have more assurance, uh, more confidence that they're sending to the right person the right amount. And so we worked with DLab, one of our fellows there, uh, to basically come up with something called the Sire Protocol, which is a way to try and solve the transaction assurance problem, but it's not the only option, right? Uh, there's different ways, different people in the blockchain ecosystem have come up with, and we want to try and implement a variety of different ways and give users options, because uh, they're, they're usually all good for different circumstances. So Robert's proposal, who Robert is our fellow, uh, he it, it's useful for a certain situation, and these payment URLs are useful for a separate situation. And so you'll see probably in the coming months, uh, you will have more and more integrations with payment systems, more and more ways to do invoices, to send transactions, to keep track of transactions. And this is all towards our goal of being your gateway to the uh, financial world, right? So we announced this new model at the IOHK Summit earlier this year. And I think for Yoroi right now, we're almost to the point where we have basically every feature you'd really want from a wallet. If you've come from any other ecosystem, any other cryptocurrency, and you open Yoroi, chances are we have all the features you're used to. And there's some small ones that we, we don't quite have, but we're going to get them all by Q3, I think. And so now we have to really uh, focus on our, our long-term vision, right? What do we want to be? And we settled on uh, being the your, your gateway to the financial world. And the reason we set up on this is because if you look at uh, cryptocurrencies, uh, even in the DApps ecosystem, a lot of people have settled on DeFi, right? It's all about financial applications. Obviously, stuff like games have taken off to some degree, uh, but mostly DApps and, and usage of cryptocurrencies revolves around financial applications. And so we thought this is really something that we have to focus on and that we think will attract the most users. And so this uh, payment URL feature is kind of the, our first uh, step into this, this vision. And we have a lot of more features that we're working on currently, a lot of features we have planned that will continue to drive us towards uh, that kind of long-term goal. Excellent. Very, very interesting, Sebastian. I have a follow-up question for you guys. So recently on the Emergo Twitter, you were at a restaurant in Japan that was accepting ADA for meals. And this micro payment invoice system that Emergo was working on, is this something that is consumer to consumer or is this something that could be utilized for a business to consumer saying that the, the, the business that's actually producing these invoices can produce them in a timely fashion to send to their customers immediately for, for example, the food payment that uh, Emergo just tweeted about? Yeah, so I think it'll help in that kind of situation because if, if you look at some of the videos of the event, the way people work is that the shop owner would have a QR code right on their phone and the people who would pay, uh, for, so for those who don't know, by the way, uh, there's a famous restaurant in Japan that started accepting ADA payment. And so we had a launch event where we had, I don't know how many people, probably like 50 people, maybe more show up to eat there and then everybody paid in ADA. And so if, if you look at the, the payment that happened, basically the store would have their QR code on their phone and the people, as they're leaving, they, they pull up their phone, scan the QR code, input the amount and then send, right? And so they had written on like a board, like today's meal is however much ADA, okay? Uh, but the problem we had is that although payment is very fast, right? You just scan the QR code and put a number and send, 
it's not really ideal because you don't want the customer to be inputting the number, right? It'd be easier if they scan a QR code and not only does it pre-fill the address, it also pre-fills the amount, right? And so if we had this feature earlier, it would have been helpful in this kind of situation, uh, which is why we want to develop the, these kinds of payment systems and invoice systems. Uh, and so th this is kind of the rationale for why we're building towards this. That makes sense. That makes sense. And I think that that works in the future. And if they can create it in a timely fashion, it, it can expand from just a restaurant model to just a regular store model, whichever stores want to accept this. And online works as well because you could generate invoices automatically and then send it to your customer. And that would probably be a great use case for that. Um, I wanted to oh. talk. Oh, Nico, uh, you wanted to say? I, yes. Yeah, I wanted to add something that's like very interesting. Sometimes you can think of a lot of the projects from Emurgo, they're like pretty diverse and maybe they don't connect. But for example, uh, this specific topic is really interesting because it connects like different projects. And uh, one of them is from uh, Robert Kornacki, which uh, you guys already mentioned with like the side protocol, which is for invoices. And this is like pretty good for like payment certainty for businesses. And also, like five minutes ago, we were talking about this URL uh, uh, link that you could like use to like do payments. So uh, actually, these two things and the restaurant connect pretty well because if we have the protocol and also we have this easy way to send payments, we could have like easy to pay payments because you wouldn't have to be like typing an address, and this could happen like in real life with the QR code. But also on top of that, you could have the payment certainty that everything's going well. And also uh, these like uh, things that we're focusing because you're always trying to focus in and like uh, everything that's like more related to financial. And uh, right now this is only like the first wave of like things that we are able to do. Uh, but uh, when we get uh, Gogan and smart contracts, uh, we already started working like a lot of new things that are also going to be complementing with this. And uh, we are like pretty excited. Okay. so. Let me try to understand this. Some kind of rapid. You have Sire, one to one protocol. Then you have this new payment URL in Yorori, and somehow those two communicate. I remember Sire has some kind of ability to wrap the transaction inside to hide it. How does that interface work? Um, with Sire, I could send you an invoice. With Yorori, you could send me a payment URL. So I guess at some point you're going to kind of like bring the two together so that uh, it's one relatively simple tran transaction, is that what's going to happen? Yeah, uh, so basically uh, we can think of like two case scenario, one that we are like in real life. So basically right now uh, in Android Mobile, you can uh, scan a QR code that that's only for like the address. It doesn't contain like the amount of money that you want to send. So uh, for example, if you need to pay like uh, 100 uh, like it's typing the thing it should be like super fast. So that's why like uh, the payment URLs like are pretty easy because it could be embedded in the same QR code. And uh, basically you will scan the QR code, you will confirm and then you will auto fill like the address and also the amount. And in the other side, for example, if you are going to pay something that you are not in real life, you always have like uh, the fear that maybe uh, there is like a middleman, uh, some sort of like attacker or like maybe like actually uh, someone copy paste the, uh, the address wrong or like uh, whatever happens, uh, you want certainty that if you're going to pay for something, actually you're paying to the right person and everything's going to go well. So that's why Robert has been working on this and he has been doing like great progress. So with these two things, uh, we can combine them for some specific cases or for depending depending on the circumstances, we can uh, get to like uh, solve like a lot of like different solutions. So these are like a little bit like uh, Lego pieces that we can put together or not. And uh, the ideas that we are going to complement with uh, the platform that we are using like CESA, Euro, Euro Moa, and some others. Nico, I had a quick follow-up question. So is this something that's static or dynamic like for example in this current market prices are very volatile so say you send an invoice to someone and um it's a restaurant that's working and the ADA value drops the next day is this something that could time out after 24 hours and you'd have to regenerate a new invoice based on the current market prices or is this something that 
just remains static and it has no sort of change over time? Uh, this is like a really good question. And this is one of the things that I'm thinking about like solving and like something that could be like pretty cool uh, to solve these problems that when we get the smart contracts, we could uh, be using uh, oracles, which basically means that it's uh, a trusted source of like some truth. And basically what we could be like uh, doing with this is we could like set times uh, so something expired, or also we could like peg uh, the price to yen, to USD dollar, or to something else. And this way we could like uh, be doing like uh, uh, payments in like with more uh, customization. So uh, right now we have like the first wave of innovation, but on top of this, then yes, to continue uh, building more like Legos on top of them, so we can have like cooler stuff. That's excellent. So basically, you're you're getting the right money. To the right person and it's more automated and faster i like that that's a good way to get towards the mass adoption side of things <laughs> yeah I, I, and uh for example you also got uh when we get the, like a smart contract uh we can also combine with like oh uh, for example you actually come to this restaurant quite often so uh you could apply like uh some discounts automatically and uh for example uh uh what is like uh being really interesting is that uh in uh, the area of smart contracts, like uh, you can also uh, do like uh, recurrent payments automatically. So sometimes maybe you don't even need to pay and you could just have like subscription and other type of uh, payment methods that uh, right now they're like blocked because uh, every time that you want to pay for something, you manually need to pay for that. Okay. And what will be cool that you can have a subscription, but you can cancel it at any time, but you don't need to be like, I'll do it manually uh, every time. Okay. And eventually with the smart contracts, I could do like, once I buy five tacos, I get one free. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Rick, we were, th we were speaking about that in the mass adoption episode. I think the one of the beginning episodes about how like coupons and loyalty points, if they could get introduced into the blockchain, it would bring more people in, the everyday people who are concerned about saving and making sure that their money stretches as far as possible. So that's good.